Welcome to Stock Babies, the gaming show for the average Joe and far beyond. Far beyond to Saturn, but not to Pluto because that does not count as a planet. It's a dwarf planet, says Tim the astronaut. Tim, wherever you are in Brazil, we thank you, we love you, all our hearts go to you. And there's our shout out for the week, folks. Tim, the Tim, astronaut. Tim, the astronaut. Tim, who fucked up a Pluto. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about Mars? Is Mars where we're going? Mars does not give a fuck. It's full of iron. Anyway, I'm the Gunner Cat. And I'm the Lo-Fi Beatnik. And be besides talking about the planets, fuck the planets. You, you can follow me on the Twitter. You can't follow this guy on the Twitter because he doesn't believe in the Twitters. I don't need to. I'm too damn sexy. You could also like and subscribe this video if you like us doing our random banter. Seriously, we don't really actually research that well. We just get drunk, talk shit, and fucking... Pass off from a diabetic coma after. Right? Uh, oh yeah, and put that notification bell because um, it'll let you know when this shit's like ready to go. Because, you know, just like everything that's inside my pants, it's always ready to go. I mean, if you type us on the... Wait, what? What? If you type <laughs> us on the, the tubes, you actually have to combine it because if you don't, you uh, get some dolls. And if you, f you actually do it right, you'll see our thing, and underneath is some crazy boofed out rocker guy. Well, I kind of, I, I, I sort of fixed it. Just look up Stock Babies Gaming. Once we get enough for you guys' followers, we'll get an actual hashtag slash, no, what is it? URL. URL we'll give you a URL yeah. that will be easier to find us. But that, for now, just look up Stock Babies Gaming. Stock you'll find Babies all our, Gaming. You'll find all our nice, beautiful videos for you to consume and, you know, fill your brain with the random knowledge that will possibly make you dumber. Well, depending on what we say. Or do. Well, they can't see what we're doing, not yet. Because next week, we're going to be experimenting with that. I mean, today, there was not that much lighting. I got electrocuted. Some of my pubes turned purple. It doesn't matter. I don't know how to fix it. He doesn't know how to fix it. But next week, we will try and fix it. If not, you'll hear audio. In other words, we might have some video. We week. might. Might. No, maybe. Maybe. Might maybe. Probably not. Okay, we're going to start off today's show with some PSAs. Which stands for Public... Uh, okay. It has that weird little symbol, the one for hope. What is that? that that's an S. Okay. No. Wrong. Wrong. Because I forgot what it was actually called in Krypton. Fuck! Anyway, we're making some public service announcements. Well, goddamn. Anyway, let's start off with the, let's start off with some, um, you know, dude, you're the one with the notes. You just tell them. All right. <clears throat> I just played around. Anyway, today's uh, public ser uh, service announcements start off with, I kid you not, Assassin's Creed having chocobos. Chocobos! Let me t uh, elaborate a little bit more. Assassin's Creed, the game where you play as some dude from the past, pretty much in Egypt on this one. This is what, Assassin's Creed Origins? I think it is. Origins, because everybody knows assassins came from Egypt. Because Egypt rules. Egypt rules. Just like that made it uh, Anyway, they decided to team up with Square Enix this week, or month, or whatever, this version of the game. They decided to team up with Square Enix to release some uh, free nifty DLC stuff. You know, um, you, you'll be getting some chocobos, or at least a little kind of saddle that makes your horse look like a chocobo or a camel. So wait. Because they're in Egypt. So you can actually somewhat have a, a camel-looking chocobo and run around and yes. assassin people and go do 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 kill yeah, right. Also, it'll actually give you more more um, weapons and stuff. Of course, the stuff that makes it look like Final Fantasy 15, you know, with their other magical magic and machine. It's Assassin's Creed. They have futuristic stuff in the past because, you know, Assassin's Creed. You just don't believe in you, the underground. You don't, you don't, you don't. Anyway, next on the agenda, or the release date, I guess, in this case, is Pugs. Or Pug G, so all you non boofers. It's not it's not pugs, it's pub G. Pub? Like, like, like pub, like as in drinking. What's it stand pub. for then? Player Unknown Battleground! And what about it? Okay, so it's it's released today. Mm. Probably by the time you guys hear this video, it's released today. You probably it's, drop it down. Yeah, already. it's all right. it's down. Mm. It's been dropped down. Mm -hmm. So now it's officially released. It, that means all its cheap ass bugs and stuff have no excuse anymore. Shaved off. Sh 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 shame. Sh no, actually, it came with an update that actually made it more, a little more smoother for people. Well, it's now in day games. Of course, you have to toss it. Well, yeah. Day. Well, yeah. It also added um, replay stuff and all that. You know, so you can start making your little movies now. True. You know, uh, of course, we're talking about the PC version. Um, I'm not really too sure if this actually released for Xbox 1.0. You know. 1.0. <laughs> you know the 1.0. The you know out of beta. Oh. Yes, oh you yeah, know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, you know, that, that, that'll be some fun. You know, we're going to actually get into that a little bit more later on in today's main topic. But in other words, uh, we still have some more PSAs for you. Oh, yes, we do. For one, Cuphead ISO is a fake. That's right. It's a fake. God damn it. Listen, Apple doesn't love you. They do not make Cuphead for your iPhone. This is some Russian dudes who decided, hey, we're going to make a uh, link to a bootleg Russian version. Uh, right? Uh, but we love Tetris. So, you know, love fucking Tetris. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, they decided to make a link to a fake um, website that actually looks like the real Cuphead website. But? And, no, I mean, like, it, but you have, they have, like, little links that are in Russian. They're like, ah, I got you there. You're got like, you there. Like maybe my glasses you know? are messed up or I'm too drunk. But yeah, so, lying, so you know, I mean, this is already a, a ish addressed. You know, mm-hmm. the guy, the guys already kind of did their whole cease and desist or whatever. You know, they took it down. No, but you know, but you know, those of you lucky who got the Cuphead for iOS, you realize it's not Cuphead. It's like a crappy port of Cuphead that like really. Yeah, re- it's re- it's communist cup of mug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, yeah, of course now it's not the communist state that it used to be, or communist country, well, yes, uh, but let's face it, it's communist cup in Russia, don't split And if ah, you're sorry. a Russian and you love our show, just keep loving our show, he just eat, you. The guy's eating beans, he's like, hey, that's not cool. Hey, that's not cool, I'm man. a Russian, I love beans, and I love steak, maybe I'm a vegan, maybe right. I'm not. Maybe he's Would an Americanized like Russian. Maybe he's a Brazilian type Russian. Oh! Yeah. Russian and Brazilian? Oh my god. That would be the, like, the most hottest chick ever. Who's talking about chicks? <laughs> Is there any more news, sir? Oh, definitely. For one, Friday the 13th, well, not just one, other things, of course. Friday the 13th now has bots. For all you people who are just having hopped on, you can just get bots again and practice and jump in. Oh, or yeah. If you're anti social, boom. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to be that uh, salacious, succulent killer of uh, Jason Voorhees, you can now practice with a bunch of dummy uh, people. And if you're just some psychopath who likes to kill people, well, there you go. The online. Festival stuff. <laughs> oh, of course. Christmas is, is that literally how it's written? In, oh, it's miss uh, detailed um, seasonal stuff. Oh, yeah. So, you know, if you're a big GTA Online fan, sh- witness. Friends, just think about it. You're going to mount your friends. In 3D. You're going to be on top of each other. In 3D. You don't need VR. Maybe it's VR, but no matter what, it's going to be in. Oh, my God. You know, they'd, they'd be smart to hold on to VR for the next one. They'd make more money that way. Oh, my God. All I'd see <laughs> is, like, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's gonna have the the, the the view of the goat, and the goat's like, all right, just go on top, one and a half to another, but please do not lick my ear. Uh, and of course, he's not gonna lick your ear. No, 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 no. If you like what you're hearing, if you want to know what Mount Your Friends is, it's a PC game that it's a uh, you mount your friends. <laughs> Think about it. It's a physics-based game where you climb on top of each other to see how high you can get. But the thing is, it's really hard to control since it's physics-based. But the one key thing is the key thing flipping around left and right. <laughs> is the banana hammock. It's the helicopter. Yes, you can it's helicopter your own shaft as a muscular, weird physics guy going on top of your friends. Hence the name, Mount Your Friends. But and, this time, and, 3D. And now, because there's beautiful news, yes, you'll be able to do that in three dimensions. Imagine the banana hammock on your face. <laughs> it's not VR, just 3D. Then... <laughs> Well, I'm going to make a game called Mount Your Friends and Shafts. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, we're actually working on Mount Your Friends. Uh, so, you know, we might actually put that up as a video soon. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I'm not telling you when. Why? Because we still have to do it. We don't have staff. We don't have staff. There's literally just two of us. No, seriously. We, there's like literally two of us. What the fuck do you expect? Yeah, I mean, hey. Hey. <laughs> don't insult the audience. I'm not going to insult Jeff, dude. Uh, Jeff, wherever you are, we salute you. All right, now we're gonna be getting into the meat of the bone. Meat of the bone, boning, boning the meat. meat. All right, today's topic: broken games made easy. Yeah. What, what do we mean by that? Well, okay. In the current landscape of video games, we're witnessing games being released with subpar graphics, mm-hmm. terrible um, mechanics. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I wouldn't say mechanics. The mechanics are the good part, but. Terrible graphics, terrible frame rates, terrible sounds, but yet they're getting critical acclaim, which is telling us that it's sending the wrong message out there. It's telling big corporations like EA and Activision, I love some of their games, so I'm not gonna, you know, not crap much. on them too much. Not too hard. But they are still kind of corporate when some of their, their movements, and it just tells them that you could release a crap game, and if you have a good enough following, then it'll be a 10 plus game, which shouldn't be the way to do it. 
Not at all. No, I mean, like, that's terrible. Like, let's start off with uh, Player Unknown Battleground. We've been talking about this for a while. It's a new hot game. It's been released recently, but just because it's hot does not mean it's a, a finely tuned game. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's riddled with bugs, glitches, hiccups. Game is freaking it is zombifying. It will make you love it. It's, but, but, yeah, it's one of those, uh, I don't know, it's, it's the gameplay is so good that it makes you jump in, but of course, broken. It's broken. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's closest competitor Fortnite has that thing clean. Yeah. Fortnite Battle Royale, which uh, which has the same gameplay, but, you know, does it with, with you know, with nice polish, but it still isn't getting as big a claim as it's, as the originator, mm-hmm. which is strange. But again, getting things like that, it's going to, it's going to give people the wrong idea here. I mean, come on, the game's releasing for, uh, with the Xbox X. Yeah. Okay, the, the system touts, you know, superior power and all that, and you're getting a game that hiccups and glitches left and right. Well, I think that uh, some major corporations actually should know how to uh, to specify and not uh, beautify, in fact, the Apache game. I mean, there's Xbox has done it with uh, this game. Sony has done it with No Man's Sky, just a robot uh, kind of thing. Yeah. And yes, don't. I that's don't care. a bro- that's really that's a broken game. The way the that way was it was advertised, game. that's what made people angry. This one, the way it's advertised, makes people think it's a real a game. Even though it did release, it's not as polished as let's say the latest Call of Duty. Right? For your 60 frames per second. You know, in a beautiful world setting. World setting. Of course, it was oh. over a little bit. Like again, I, I mean, like I'm, I'm, I sound like I'm crapping all over freaking PUBG here, which I, I'm not. But I mean, games like that were overlooked because everybody's like, "Hey, I'm playing this uh, player unknown battleground because it's it's amazing. I get chicken dinners if I win." What? You know, when you win, it says winner, winner, chicken dinner. See, I never played the game, and, and it, it seems kind of, I love the idea of like one versus a, a shitload, uh, Shawn Michaels style, you know, going in Royal Rumble, but you win and you get a chicken dinner? Yep. So when you win a chicken dinner. I, do you actually get a chicken dinner? You, you, I, I'm assuming you get a chicken dinner. From where? <laughs> you know, digital chicken dinners, you know. Well, uh, like that Cookie Mama t- shit, you know. Yeah, but is it rotisserie chicken? I want maybe some a nicely roasted chicken. You know, you put some lemon on that. Oh maybe man, not. dude, or they should really do that. Just give people chicken vouchers. I know, right? It's like you win, you get like a uh, like a coupon to uh, Popeyes or something. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, I would love uh, it. I would actually uh, say yes. I love this uh, game. I have uh, won. I ranked. Popeyes. Yes, right. But um, that's not the case. I mean, like I said, I, I, you know, I, I I like the idea of the game. I like the game. Uh-huh. But you know, deserving of a ten out of ten. Uh, you can't. Not that many games deserve yeah. a 10 out of 10, but yeah, in my opinion, can't. I don't think it's even a 7 out of 7. Yeah, you can't. Oh, uh, 7 out of 10, I mean. You can't, I mean, like that. See, because that gives the wrong ideas, like giving Capcom, the, telling Capcom it's okay to release a game that has terrible looking characters as long as the gameplay is fun. Well, what, what game is uh, broken from Capcom? In this well, case? it's not, it, uh, yeah, it's, I guess you would call it broken Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. It's a uh, gameplay mechanic, sturdy. Great oh. game, fun. Yeah, well, of course, Capcom knows how to. They they know the fighting genre, but what's the problem with the game? Though? Well, the game the game looks but ugly. What? But ugly. Wait, like, you know, wow. You, like like Nickelodeon Martians, but ugly. Oh god damn! I remember that. Those were some <laughs> bug ugly. Oh my god. Uh, there's god. your nostalgia for you kids. We're uh, Martians and we're not sexy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, what's called them? Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, th- I guess they try to go with a realistic look, uh-huh. like, because it's kind of Disney, you know, Disney, hey, we're giving you Marvel again, because yeah. you can make games, we own this. So, you know, they try to make it look like the movies, kind of. But? But Capcom's side is full of ca- anime-style kind of influenced characters. You got, you got Mega Man, and you got, you, you got, uh, well, what, what, are, what are things, like, the only person that, person that who looks like a person would be, like, Frank West from the, uh, Dead Rising series. What about Chris Redfield? He's there? Yeah, he's there. Yeah, yeah, he kind of looks like a person, but they have kind of, like, these well, fake, uh... Well, first of all, I don't think, in real, real life, I don't think Chris Redfield's a real person. Yeah. I mean, remember part five, where he just punched the shit out of that boy? <laughs> he's like, muscle tongue, get the fuck out of the way, right. my boy. That guy just yes. fucking juiced up on that game. He got juiced, dude. Juice! Juice! Anyway... <laughs> Anyway, uh, okay, so yeah, anyway, Marvel's Capcom. It looks realistic, but the problem is with characters like Mega Man and Firebrand, yeah. freaking the. the you don't have a freaking, solid uh, art style, you're trying to say. Yeah, you don't got a solid yeah. art style. You're just trying to make everybody look re- realistic, and that's weird. Yeah, it just throws it off. Try to make yeah. a Morgan from Darkstalkers look like a real person. <clears throat> it doesn't work. <laughs> it's quite easy. First, you get, a, you get someone, and you put bat wings. Success! <sighs> uh, ever seen the movie Catwoman? Yeah, that's, it's kind of, that's kind of the way you described it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Put some leather and cat on her. First of all, get get <laughs> as much black leather for Halle Berry as possible. We want to make this movie sexy. It's the Batman universe. That, I don't know what Batman universe that was. Uh, but anyway, well, well, so back, 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 back to what I'm saying. Okay. But like, you know, but um, it's also, here's another thing that happens with the Marvel's Capcom though, mm. is um, it's also made easy. And this kind of part of our, like a little bit, bit part of our other our other part of the topic here. It's like it's like it's made for dummies, I guess you could say. How's it made for dummies? Well, I mean, you got quick combos. You keep pressing square, you'll have you'll hit combos like you're some kind of pro. Oh goddamn! And and you know, and it's like you know, a simple person could fight. I mean, like there's uh, there's obviously advanced levels. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you know, you play online, somebody will probably you know yeah, beat you to oblivion. Be, yeah, but that's I mean, like. There. There's also kind of like a fairness to it, I guess, because even if you're a simpleton, if you get lucky and you get the right moves, you could probably win. You're not really that outmatched, but it's kind of like, kind of, it diminishes the game just a little bit. It makes it seem like there's not much to it after that, because it's so simple. I guess they're trying to hook you with it, but I mean, like... Well, I, I think they're just trying to get the common person to play, you know, because it's a fighting game. No matter what, all fighting games prior to this one, if you could say that, you gotta have a learning curve. I mean, of course, you can punch, kick, and just do their stupid little yeah. butt mashing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's and that's that's good. I mean, I, I'm all for more gamers, people playing games. I mean, this show is aimed at mostly at freaking people who who aren't gamers. But regardless of that, I mean, it's still kind of like it's still it still kind of makes it too simple and too kind of lazy. I, I guess you would say, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. In the end thing is, there are corporations that need to make as much money as possible. Uh, what I don't understand is, you know, they're making the game easier. That's fantastic. What happened to easy, normal, hard, and shit right? sit down mode? Right. If you really want to challenge, put sit down mode. If you want to have a standard game, go to normal. That simple. It's right? that simple. Well, no, well, see, that's the thing. That now that that barely even matters itself. Let's take uh, let's take a uh, Destiny for example. Uh-huh. Let's talk about Destiny 2 again. I mean, De- Destiny 2 is in the news so much, it's like, I might as well have a segment on our show called it seems It's to be, Time for Destiny 2. It seems to be our destiny to review and speak of Destiny 2 modern right? voice. In a sense, it's like, it, it, what's sad, it's like, you know, I, I would like more for, like, you know, games like that to get people together, right? But this isn't the way you do it. The game was made too easy. Again, t- touching on the subject. <sighs> easy. The game has a loyal cult-like following. Go figure. The first game... With its flaws, it had things here and there that were kind of wrong, messed up, whatever. But it had a kind of like way of getting people to keep playing. Destiny 2, on the other hand, was made for the the, the average person. Mm-hmm. It's simple to be to be able to get up to put somebody and like, hey, you want to play? This? Okay, hey, look, I'm running around shooting. Okay, that's it. Well, it's a shooter though, so how how's there a bigger learning curve than I play this shooter? How how could I? Well, okay, this? it's a shooter slash MMO ish kind of game. Oh yeah. Well, what happens to an MMO ish kind of game when when you finish it? I mean, you just get more gear. Well, Ride well. And get more gear. Yeah. Well, now let's now imagine a game where when you finish it, there's not much better gear you can get. Uh huh. Oh. You know, like that. That's it. Yeah. Like you, like you know, like probably the end game gear. Not even the end game. Probably like the end of the game. Like when you beat the boss, you get that gear. That's pretty much it. And what was after that? Nothing. Nothing. And you know, okay. I'm mean, now imagine having a fan base. Yeah. That's super hardcore. They're gonna they finish that game. I I don't know the record for it, but but um they finished that game really fast, very fast. In fact, can you imagine being a twitchy shooter person who finished the game so fast and knowing that there's no more no end game weapons that's worth getting? Well, that's that's a bad example of uh, of a. Uh, what would you call that game? What that kind of genre? Um, like a, shooter? yeah, like an RPG shooter. RPG shooter, yeah. Because I remember Borderlands One and Two. Of course, they had um, a pretty good uh, amount of guns when you beat the game, but they also had uh, a good leveling system, a, a better, in my opinion, um, difficulty system, and the drop ratio was a good percentage, but not too ridiculous. Unless it was something meant for farming, but I think they handled that perfectly. Exactly. Well, okay, let me kind of redo what I was saying because I kind of kind of elaborate a little bit better on this. Mm-hmm. I can tell it a little bit better, better. Okay, like say in the game you get guns. Mm-hmm. In, okay, Destiny 1, you get guns, mm-hmm. you get, uh, you can get multiple of the same gun, 
with different perks. Okay. Okay. On Destiny 2, they released it that you just... Every version of the gun is the same thing. No extra perks. No extra perks? Like, say, oh, like, okay, uh, the Hawk Beam gun has zoomed in sight times 2. In Destiny 1, you could ha- get a Hawk Beam gun that has Destiny, uh, zoom times 4 with probably piercing bullets. This one, it Destiny 2, stopped. is every every Hawk Beam thing is the same thing. Oh, man. That's, that's it. Uh, okay, and now imagine finishing the game. Before on Destiny 1... Even after after the the game was over, you used to keep grinding to to till you finally eventually found the, the freaking version. the bomber version yeah. of it that like oh this is gonna be sweet the Hawkeye super duper that shoots out sparkles that burn people's faces exactly one real wink oh my exactly God. but it's they dangerous. took that out pretty much so you just have the plain old vanilla yep so all guns are vanilla yep when we want chocolate yep fantastic exactly no chocolate. and another another example is uh, skill trees so the first game had skill trees this one doesn't so why would they just dumb it down this way they know that they're a hardcore following and that's what i'm flavor, talking you know? exactly right but no it's it's activision i know that it's but activision how? and it's a bungee i'm a blame bungee sort of now because you're kind of you're that. making the game see I, I blame bungee they are doing that but activision is well come on yeah, you know they're just no, they really are known for dlc uh scraping like that yeah but, but, but back to the gun thing how would that how would um not having extra stuff to a gun actually uh, dumb down the game though how would you think that would be dumbing it well, down well think well think about this bro i mean i used to you used to be able to grind all the time just for doing that yeah and now because you don't the gun stock that's it yeah but how's that how exactly would that be um, easier for people well it because all people need to like you know people who, who want to play the game hey look i did this i won the gun i won the gun i win <laughs> you know, I get the gun. Okay. Hey, like, okay, you do this massive super raid. Okay. Because I give you super raid. Guess what? You get coins at the end. Oh my god. You get coins that you could probably find in the game. Somewhere. Probably. Yep. Maybe. Because you know, even that, it's like, hey, we give you the super raid gun of hope. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, Jimmy over there has super raid gun of hope. You have raid gun of hope. Doesn't do anything different. You can go online. You know, you're not special in any which way. The only special thing you got is probably dance emotes. That doesn't even, um, in my opinion, that doesn't count as uh, not only uh, dumbing down the gameplay and difficulty, but also dumbs down the actual gaming experience in general. Yeah. That's kind and of cool. This is, why, this is why Destiny's people have dropped off massively since then. Wow. Like, a man, think about, like, imagine if you had a clan of people. Uh-huh. Like, but in Destiny 1, you'd probably have 100 active people at once. Now I have a friend who did this, by the way. Okay. Yeah, he had hundred people, hundred people in his clan. Now wow. down to ten. Wow. Now down to ten. Even that, maybe like three wow. active players. That's even lower. And ten than, every once in a while players. That's lower than WoW or something. Yeah. World Warcraft. Wow. Right. <laughs> that's terrible. Wow. That is. Yeah. Wow. Get it? Wow. World of Warcraft. I don't know if they did that intentionally. No. Because <laughs> they're a world of of. Uh, What's Warcraft, it was called Warcraft, Warcraft yeah, yeah. 1, 2, blah, 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 blah. Rise of the Orcs. Uh, no, I actually played a tiny bit of it, because my one of my cousins said, hey, if you love Age of Empires, you got to hop into this. Oh, so nice. I actually liked that one, but right. I didn't play the MMO. Right? Uh, no, like I said, that's that's the problem with these games being released that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's too easy for people, and it's too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, it just, it, it's killed the experience. This, combined with the releasing games half-assed, like broken all that stuff. it's just it's not good for the gaming community in general. it's really unfortunate frankly I you mean, know they're trying to say the biggest bang of buck but the way they're dumbing down things thinking that the actual gaming the gamer is a dumbed down person in reality they're not just the 18 year olds that everyone thinks they are but they're the 30 year olds the 35 year olds they're the, the college professors or the students or the lawyers the bankers oh, yeah. the doctors. we all we all grew up we yeah. all grew up with video games come on exactly. i mean i mean you can't tell me that um it's uh, a 20 to a to a 30 a 30 35 year old won't know what a video game is impossible yeah no it's not every every 30 40 year old, well you know obviously except on other country or well, we're, we're you not. know no, like the average person knows what a video game is everyone in the first world country obviously knows what a video game is and parts of the third world countries of course it's still considered a, a first world luxury in my book but saying that gaming as itself has evolved to something what it used to be from the 80s and 90s exactly come on we were raised on hardcore ass gaming you're gonna give us freaking this this 
easy to chew on crap. You know about your gaming experience. When you saw a cartridge, it did not work, so you either licked it or blowed it. And everyone knows <laughs> that we're talking about that horrible Stop. tasting Stop. chip taste. Stop licking and blowing people. Yeah, it's actually bad for the cartridge. Just we didn't know that. We're like, we gotta clean it. Don't get the alcohol to use fit. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in. So much in you, I know. Um, yeah, but I mean, like back then, I mean, like that's you know, we play these games, not this artificial difficulty stuff. I mean, you know, like I uh, mean, I love me some Dark Souls. I love oh, me that's, some that's Bloodborne. Legit, actual, that's legit awesomeness, but it's engineered still, for still engineered hard stuff that yeah. uh, you know, it's not, it's not, not necessary. I mean, you could, those could use a little dummy down in my opinion, because you know, if any, that's a little, not a lot. Not if a lot. anything, we should stop doing this. Call of Duty-esque uh, way of dumbing down things by adding more enemies, sh tossing more grenades, and shooting you once and you fall down and die. I think the best example was of actual difficulty was the Fear series, especially part one with its uh, amazing AI. <laughs> yeah, those are great. Oh yeah, I mean, you toss a grenade, they're like, fuck that, and they go in the right and shoot you. Right? You, you, know, know, you, you want to know a trippy part of that about that game, though, is if you died and restarted, they wouldn't do the same thing either. They'd actually know they know your gameplay pattern. Adaptive AI, man. Adaptive AI. And that was in 2005. Right? So what happened? Somehow we've de evolved. Like, look. Yeah, they just dumbed down games. Right. Hence the title. Booty boot. Doop a doop. I mean, who doesn't like to go blasting through to uh, clones as John Woo, practically, you know? Right? Dubs everywhere. Tequila! <laughs> <laughs> that was freaking. It wasn't. Yeah, that was freaking uh, Stranglehold, huh? Yeah, Stranglehold. Dope, right? That's a great game. He drinks it. No, not Stranglehold. Oh, that, that was a game. You know, but I was talking about uh, uh, yeah, hard, hard boiled. Yeah, where he just sl slams the glass on the table. He takes a chug and he starts playing jazz. <laughs> who, who the hell does that? That is the dopest thing. Like, excuse me, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do some jazz. <laughs> I'm trying to wonder if maybe we should do a, a, a movie podcast as well. Maybe. 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 You decide in the comments. If you if you say yes, obviously say yes. If you say no, for for the love of God, don't don't make fun. Don't make fun. We have fragile egos. We we do. You know, my, my ego. Very large fragile egos. My, my that ego is hard cherry eventually. flavored. My ego is cherry flavored. Don't take that cherry. We both know to know. Anyway, back to the topic. Back to the topic at hand. Back to the topic at hand. Why games. games are so shitty. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's just, it's not the games that are shitty. It's just the idea behind it. I mean, I, no, not the idea. What's the word I'm looking for? The dumbing down. Just The dumbing down. I mean, it's like, just the dumbing down. And just like I said, you know, critical acclaim for these games. Like I said, these games deserve it. Yes, but they don't also don't. Yeah, but they shouldn't be put above stuff. They shouldn't be overlooked for certain things just because there's some kind of cult classic. Look. Well, here's one thing about it: if we had the games of, of in the past, of you know the early two, uh, late two thousands, like before two thousand nine, all those sweet games, we had the same graphics, same um, frame rate, same uh, same love. In fact, you brought them nowadays and had the same uh, company, same people making it, you will have a better game. And those acclaims you got from games today will, will be looked at as parasitic larvae compared to the games that were brought in from the early times modernized. And I'm not talking about eight, uh, HD uh, remakes or whatever. I'm talking about the same dedication and the same practices they had to uh, there's, 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 DLC, there's, there's a there's a reason There's a reason why Shadow of the Colossus is being remade for PS4 and people are going to buy it. Because yeah. it was a fucking great game back then. And that's all you need sometimes. Simple. It looks simple. You don't even need that much uh, storytelling. There's no freaking talking. There's barely any talking. Yes, you can't understand how to say it. Man, right? <laughs> it's all I can say. I mean, like, like I said, I know, I, I know God of War is going to be beautiful when it comes out. But but it's probably going to be very story driven. And um, well, no, I'm not going to knock it in because I'm, I'm probably going to buy it. But um, what I'm saying is that sometimes simplicity is all that matters. You see why some of these indie games get that, that, that acclaim. Now, see, when an indie game does it, I don't mind it. No. In the game, because, you know, those are small guys who are, you know, they're, they're trying. I applaud those indie developers who actually uh, who learned the process of code and actually made something amazing and close to polish. I mean, when they make a, when they have a broken game, everyone shits on it, but in reality, when they don't, when they don't have a broken game, a polished game, that game is on par, in my, in my actual experience, better than most indie games made by, I know, the slogan, like, not little games made by uh, major companies. You know, people still call, like, let's say Helldivers an indie game, that's not an indie game. No, <laughs> yeah. that's real. But you get the point. Of course, I would not help, I would not knock that game, Helldivers, but it's a sweet game too, but, 
but you know, actual indie developers themselves, they still have that passion that we, we saw back in the early 2000s and late 2000s. Exactly, you know. So, you know, like I said, may, maybe we'll get into a better place the next year because this is actually the end of the year. Yep. So, you know, 2017 is coming to a close and hopefully, you know, the stuff we've seen for, for the next year looks good. I just hope that these companies learn from this and not release terrible, terrible games because they think people just want to buy games that are cult following, you know? Ain't nobody want to buy Bubsy. Nobody I'm sorry. Wants to buy, is, did they release a little They did Bubsy? release a little Bubsy. What was it called? Bubsy? Slide and Reloaded or something? Bubsy, Bubsy and Attack of the <laughs> Bubsies or those were furry things, whatever. Uh, but, um, what are they called? But I, I don't remember the name. Buzz Balls? I'm just calling Buzz Balls. So I'm Attack of the Furries. But, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I mean, um, you know, like I said, yeah, uh, let's go ahead. Cult following, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I and, you know, before I kind of, I, I had a recent kind of like look back at some of the Bubsy games. It's like, wait a minute, why did I think these games were awesome? Yeah, right. And uh, you know, I mean, not awesome, but like you, you like I was, uh, you know, I would see a picture. Hey, I remember Bubsy, and then when you go back to play a game, wait a minute, it's nostalgia. What, it's what, pure yeah, nostalgia. Right? Nostalgic is a hell of a drug. <laughs> it is the hell of a drug. It's a hell of a drug. Oh, hell of a drug. Yes. That was the hell of a drug. Think about this. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's on pure red PCP. What's the side effects? He says hello to everything. Hello, lamb. <laughs> <laughs> hello, parcel <of> toilet. <laughs> hello, BB King Records. <laughs> uh, I think that I think we're gonna call it then. That's the end of the show for right now. All right. Hope you guys like our ranting. Again, this is the Gutter Cat. This is the Lo-Fi Beatnik. And we're the Stock Babies. Again, you can follow me on Twitter at DJ Gutter Cat because I have not changed that yet. I'll change that Twitter handle later. And, you know, um, like, subscribe our videos on YouTube. And, you know, let's go. Put that notification bell because, again, if you know when we're, we're releasing these things, then you'll have a better appreciation of how much we really, really work for you guys. And hopefully by next week we'll have a video. If not, mm-hmm, Tim, I'm sorry. Mm, yes. Again, Tim. Keep searching those Plutos and telling us they're dwarf planets. You gotta look past the universe and the stars beyond the Milky Way. Also, tell Major Tom to come back home. What? Tell Major Tom to come back home.